this is Rick Frost and my call is K4REF. In this program we're going to look at some practical ways to set up your audio levels when you're using a Signalink sound card interface. We'll look at both HF and VHF UHF applications. The Signalink is one of the most popular external sound card interfaces being used in ham radio. It's used with FL Digi, Winmore and Winlink Express, Sound Modem, and many other popular softwares. I get a lot of questions, especially from new users, on how in the world to set up their audio levels for digital communications. And it's no wonder, it can be very confusing. I'm going to try to give you a practical, systematic way of setting up your system that would give you good performance in the digital environment. I don't claim this is the best way, but it works great for me, and I hope it'll give you a starting point and a basic understanding of how to get consistent results. So let's get started. I want to start out by doing a verbal rundown of the complete list of items that you're going to adjust to get your Signalink audio levels correct. I want you to keep in mind these overall goals as you go through this list. The first goal is to adjust the receive audio level at the PC to be above negative 10 dB with no peaking. The second goal is to adjust your transmit level so that the signal is at or below ALC level. In other words, we don't want any ALC. And thirdly, we want to get to where you're making only your final adjustments on the signal link. One of the things that makes a signal link so complicated is that there are so many different places that need to be adjusted to get things correct. So we'll go through, down through the list. The first one is at the computer. At the computer you want to set your sound, record, and playback levels to 0 dB. You also want to set the signal link as the default for the record and playback sound. The next place you want to adjust is the signal link itself. You want to set up the transmit and receive knobs on the front of the unit to the 12 noon position or straight up. And secondly, you want to set the DLY, which is the delay, to none. That means rotating it fully counterclockwise. The third thing you're going to do is go to the programming software, whether it's FL Digi, Sound Modem, Winlink Express, any of those. You're going to go in and set the signal link as the input and output audio device. Uh, most commonly you'll see uh, the signal link listed as the USB audio codec. So that's what you're looking for no matter what it says. Uh, there are a couple other optional things you can do. Uh, sometimes you can adjust the actual transmit level from within the software. And you can also fine tune uh, the parts per million transmit and receive frequency errors by using a program called Check Sample Rate or Check SR. Uh, so those are two optional things to do. You might want to do those after you've completed everything else. And finally, we're going to go to the radio, and we're going to be adjusting the levels on the data port, which is where the signal link is connected. So that's your input, output, and push-to-talk port that's on the back of the radio where your cable comes in. Those settings within your radio, we're going to set the radio when the software is running. So again, that we get that negative 10 dB or higher at the PC with no uh, peaking. And then we're also going to set the input level radio uh, levels uh, so that there's no ALC during transmit. And the rule of thumb for this is that we're going to set the power level at the radio higher than the actual transmit power that we adjust with the signal link. Uh, we've explained this in some earlier videos and I'll cover this a little bit later. Uh, it's not as complicated as it sounds, but that's how we're going to do it. Uh, and that's going to be primarily for the HF. Uh, we want to turn off all digital modes and use the transmit power and the ALC meters as uh, the thing to identify if we're doing things correctly. Uh, for VHF UHF, we don't have those typical meters, and so we're going to use a second radio to listen to the audio levels that are being transmitted, and we can adjust it that way. Uh, so again, uh, to cover what we're trying to do, we're going to adjust the receive audio levels so that they're higher uh, than a negative 10 dB with no peaking. And then we're going to also adjust our transmit levels so they're at, at or below zero ALC. Uh, and we'll be making all of our final adjustments right at the signal link. Once you get this done, uh, you pretty much can just run everything from the signal link once you get everything in the ballpark. 
So let's go back and take a more specific look at exactly how we do all of these things. Well, now that you've got the big picture, let's go back and look at each one of these things individually and show you exactly what we're talking about. The first thing we're going to look at is the computer sound settings. Uh, on my computer, there's an actual speaker uh, on the bottom right-hand corner, and you can see the menu that it brings up. If you don't have the speaker there, you can come over uh, to the Windows uh, Start menu and bring up the control panel. Uh, I'm using uh, Windows 7, and uh, based on depending on which uh, computer operating system you're using, it may look differently, but you're trying to get to these same settings in whichever one you're using. If you come down here and click on the sound icon uh, that will take you to, to the uh, sound menu. Now that that's up, we'll close the control panel. And uh, this is the one that we're actually interested in making changes to. Um, you'll notice there's a playback tab, a recording tab, a sounds tab, and a communications tab. Uh, make sure it says do nothing on communications. Uh, for internal sounds, we want to make sure that there's no sounds. We don't want the computer uh, making any sounds that uh, would trigger the signal link. Uh, and then we come over to the recording and playback tabs. Uh, you'll notice that when my signal link is in and connected, it shows up here. Uh, if you can either click on the signal link, uh, and once you do that, or come down to properties, uh, and that will bring you up uh, the properties menu. Um, I like to actually go in and label its signal link uh, and actually change the icon to a box so it looks a little bit different uh, than the rest of the items. I can easily identify it. Uh, that's on the general tab. Uh, in either way, it's going to show up as a USB audio codec. That's always how the signal link will look. Uh, the next tab is the Listen tab, and we don't want to do anything there. I'll come over to the Levels tab, and this is where we're going to set the level coming into the computer. You notice on the right side I've got DB showing here. Yours may not show that. Yours may show percentage. If you just right click on this window, you can choose decibels, and that's what you want. And then you can set it to whatever decibel reading you want. Uh, basically, we want to set it to zero. Uh, so you notice that I'm going to bring it way down and try to get it as close to zero as possible. I can't quite get it on zero, so I'm going to put it on the positive side of that. Uh, for my computer here, uh, uh, plus 2.1 is as close as I can get to it. And that's fine. We just want to get as close to zero as possible, uh, zero dB. And our last tab is advanced, and this will let you know uh, which uh, type of uh, hertz setting you've got set. Uh, I typically use a 44100 on the one channel. Um, and that's what I use for all of my sound gear. Um, if you've got a fast computer, you can set it up to the, to the DVD quality, uh, which is a little bit faster hertz. But anyway, this is the level I set it at. Uh, so once you're done with all of those things, make sure you hit OK at the bottom. Um, and that will uh, allow it uh, those settings to take place. And now you've got the settings here. Uh, the other one we're going to go to is Playback. And we'll click on the Playback tab. Again, make sure that uh, these are set as the default. You can see this green indicator here. Uh, if the speakers are set as default, uh, just hit this button here. It changes it. If it looks like this, you basically want to select the signal link and come down here and set it as the default. Uh, so both the recording and the Playback tabs, the signal link set as the default. And again, we're going to go to the Properties on the Playback. And tabs look a little bit different here. Uh, this time the levels is the next one over. And again, we're going to change uh, this reading uh, so that it's uh, 0 dB, which in this case is all the way up. Um, come over to Enhancements. Uh, we want to disable all enhancements. And on the Advanced, again, we can look at the uh, particular uh, input level we're using. Uh, so once you get those the way you want it, you just click on OK. And basically, that gives you the setup uh, levels uh, for the signal link. Um, the one really nice thing is that it does, on the Windows 7, you do get a meter here. And this is where you can actually see those incoming levels on the Recording tab. Um, one of the programs that I really love, and I'm going to show it to you right now, is made by Darkwood Designs, and it's this little VU meter uh, that they've made. Um, and uh, I really like this. This lets me have a meter up and running all the time, and basically it's showing me the same thing that I would see if I was looking at the recording uh, sound level 
indicator. Uh, I can see what my levels would be, and I don't have to have the separate uh, sound window up and operating. Uh, so again, if you compare these levels to these levels, that's basically what we're looking at here. Uh, I'll put a link to this uh, below this video. If you right click anywhere on here, this is where the settings for it are, uh, which isn't real obvious, but it's made by Paul Marshall. Uh, if you go to his site and download it, uh, make sure you hit him uh, with the donation. Uh, this is a terrific program. The only thing in the setup, make sure you get right, is that you're looking at the signal length. Uh, if you don't change this, then you're not looking at the signal link signal. And I changed it and renamed it signal link. Uh, but you can set it up to see the uh, yellow segments and do some other minor adjustments if you want. Really like this program. Uh, so that's there, and that's how we can look at those levels uh, on the computer that are coming from the radio. Next thing we want to look at is the signal link settings itself. Uh, we want to make sure that the uh, transmit and receive are set to the noon positions and the delay is set to none, which is fully counterclockwise. Okay, so here's the front of our signal link. You notice we've got the transmit, receive, and delay knobs. And the transmit and receive, we both have, want to have those vertical at the 12 o'clock position. And then we want the delay to be fully counterclockwise uh, so that there's no delay introduced by the signal link. Pretty straightforward stuff. The other item I want to show you is that in some softwares, you can adjust the transmit level being produced by that program. Uh, we're looking at WinLink Express, and I'm in a WinMore WinLink uh, session at the moment. Uh, if you come into the Setup menu and go to WinMore TNC Setup, uh, this brings up uh, the setup that we would normally do. And again, we would choose the SignalLink uh, codec as the input uh, playback and capture devices. The thing I want you to notice here is the drive level. This is actually the output level uh, that's going to drive the signal out of the program. And you can adjust this level if necessary in some programs. What I suggest you do is make it a last resort. Um, try all of the other levels first. And then if you really do have to come in here and adjust this, uh, you can. But uh, just be aware of that, that that's one other place that you can check uh, to see if uh, the level is set correctly. We've done the first three steps to actually get to the fourth step, which is actually adjusting the input and output levels at the radio. When we do this, we should start to see the levels that you want to have. So I'm going to bring up my uh, darkwood meter, and this is basically uh, the level coming to the uh, personal computer uh, from my radio. And if you can see on my TS-2000, uh, on the menu 50C is the output level of the radio. And I'm going to adjust that down. It's sitting at probably 2 there. And you can see how low this indicator is. I want to bring that up and get it up to about 12 or so, somewhere in that ballpark. And this is just for background static. Uh, I could easily pick a digital signal with that level uh, there, uh, but I just want to get a base level to work with. Uh, so you can see I'm pretty happy with that level there, uh, somewhere between 16 to 12, and that's where I'm going to leave uh, that output setting. The other setting that we're going to look at uh, on HF is for the uh, actual transmit level. Now again, remember, uh, we want to adjust the incoming audio level on the radio so that we see no ALC during transmission. Uh, the basic rule of thumb here is that we want to uh, transmit uh, at a higher, at a lower level than the actual power setting on the radio. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the power setting on my Kenwood TS-2000 is set to 60 watts. And I can go to uh, FL Digi and bring that up. And if you hit this tune button here, it'll actually put your radio uh, into transmit and uh, give you a nice tone to work from. And that's where you can see a consistent level. Uh, the one thing to do, uh, would be a smart way to do this, would be to use a dummy load if you can uh, so that uh, you aren't actually transmitting over the air. But uh, if you need to do it over the air, do it that way. Just try to make it as short and uh, as possible. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, go, do an ID if you can. Uh, so that's how you actually generate the tone uh, to uh, send out. And uh, so <laughs> we'll go back to our program here. Um, 
So we're generating that tone, and we're going to adjust the input level at the radio. In my case, it's menu fee item 50B on my 2000. I'm going to adjust this level up and down manually while I watch the transmit level on the radio when it's transmitting. And I want to adjust it to where I see an actual level somewhere between 30 to 50 watts. Somewhere in that ballpark is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, so you can see right there, it's about 30 watts there, and I have no ALC indicated uh, during transmission. Uh, I can actually bring this all the way up to almost 60 watts. When I get to 60 watts, then you'll start to see ALC start to be indicated. So if I'm anything less than 60 watts, I should be fine, and you can adjust it in that ballpark. A lot of time, this meter will jump between 30 and 50 watts uh, when it's transmitting. Uh, and that's 10, 10 to what I, what I tend to do and what I tend to see. 30 watts is plenty of power on digital uh, to do just about anything you need to do. Uh, so again, uh, set the power level to 60 watts and adjust the radio input to see 30 to 50 watts indicated, and you'll have no ALC. The last thing we want to look at is adjustments that are made to VHF UHF radios. Uh, if you're using a radio like my TS-2000 that has the uh, input and output uh, adjustments, you'll just do it the same way. But say you're using a handheld like uh, a Bofang uh, that doesn't have uh, those uh, internal controls. Well, how would you, how would you adjust uh, those levels? Well, in the Bofang, uh, you can now connect that via a cable to the signal link, and it just plugs into the side of the radio. And what you'll do is uh, you'll use a program, say, like Sound Modem here uh, as your interface. And you can see the waterfall that's here. And what we'll do on the uh, Bofang itself is just turn the radio on, and you'll adjust the volume level right on the radio. And so you'll turn it up and down uh, until you get the level that you want. Uh, so that's why having a meter like uh, this uh, one that I have here is pretty handy. Uh, so once you get it set in the correct position, then you want to be very careful not to adjust the volume knob. Uh, to adjust the transmit level is a different issue, and I'm going to give you a down and dirty way to do it without uh, doing anything really technical. Uh, what you're going to do is transmit an audio signal uh, and listen to it with another radio. So if you have uh, another Bofang or another radio that you can listen uh, in on, you can listen to the transmission. And what you're going to do is turn the transmission power on the signal link up until the audio plateaus, uh, the actual audio signal plateaus, where you turn it up and no matter how much more you turn it up, the audio doesn't increase in volume as you're listening to it on the second radio. Uh, then you're going to turn the volume down on the, the transmit volume down on the signal link until you notice that that volume on the second radio is starting to decrease. You can hear it sort of backing off, um, and that's where you can tell that you're at the point where there's no ALC. So we're just going to listen in on a separate radio to your transmission and basically turn the signal link up until it plateaus and then back off to where you can just hear it start to back away in volume, and that's where you're going to set it. And that's how you're going to go about adjusting that. And you'll notice on your single signal link where that is. Uh, on mine, it happens to be right about uh, the uh, 12 o'clock position. Uh, so uh, I can just eyeball it uh, from there on out and have a pretty good idea that I'm right in the correct position. Uh, so that's how you take care of it on uh, VHF and UHF. Well, that wraps up our training video on how to adjust your signal link audio levels. Don't forget our three goals of making our receive audio above negative 10B, adjusting our transmit levels where there's no ALC, and get to the sweet spot in your system where you're making most of your adjustments with your signal link. If you want to learn more about radio-based digital communications, please go to my YouTube site by searching for K4REF. You'll find my complete RMS training series, which will teach you how to set up and run WinLink Express. You'll also find other video playlists showing you how to use other popular digital communications, modems, and softwares. I hope this program has been helpful to you. Make sure you check out the links provided below.
and feel free to comment on ways you found to successfully set up and run a SignalLink-based system. 73 from K4REF.